Well, hey, everyone. Man, did we ever cover an exciting uh, text uh, this week? Um, from last week, remember how, how it ended with the Pharisees and the Herodians uh, were, were holding counsel with each other, considering how they could destroy, uh, basically end Jesus. So then, so then this week we learned he, he retreats uh, to the sea. Uh, and tens of thousands of people probably converge on there just to be healed. And it, it, again, throughout the book of Mark, he draws this amazing contrast, this undeniable differentiation between his disciples, uh, those who are truly following him, and just the crowd who want something from him. And I just want to want to kind of set the stage of this scene that uh, that we studied this week. So Jesus retreats uh, to the to the sea. Uh, to get away from everyone. And all of a sudden, tens of thousands of people from all over uh, Judea and, and the Galilean area converge onto Jesus to, to be healed. And even demon-possessed people that are crying out his name. And it's so many people that Jesus perceives there's a danger to him. And so he says to his disciples, hey, get, get a boat ready uh, because of this crowd, uh, because they may crush me. And so this is, this is all going on and Jesus is healing people. And the, the way the Greek is there, people are violently touching Jesus, just trying to touch him so they can be healed. Again, Mark is drawing this contrast in his book. Are you in the crowd where you just want something from Jesus? Or are you one of his disciples where you just want more of him to help lead you to surrender to him? And so it, it gives us some amazing uh, application um, as to what Jesus does amid this chaotic moment, uh, Jesus withdraws uh, to a mountaintop. And we get some insight from, from Luke's gospel, his account of, of it in chapter 6, where he spends all night uh, alone and praying with his father, praying to his father uh, in heaven. And we learn he's about to make a huge decision, arguably one of the greatest decisions Jesus ever made was appointing his 12 apostles, uh, those whom he would give his authority uh, to go out and do their own miracles and, and to heal people and to cast out demons and, and also to, to write our New Testament. Um, and so it, it just, it begs the question, what do we glean from this text? As amazing as it is, we've got to have some good application. Well, we learned that there are four undeniable marks of a strong Christ follower. First off, we've got to spend time with our Father. We've got to have a consistent uh, period throughout the days, weeks, and months where we set ourselves apart alone with our Father to hear uh, what He's doing. And in the midst of that, we've got to be praying. We've got to have a joyful prayer life uh, where we draw closer to God and He draws closer uh, to us uh, through prayer. It's a way that we have communion with God, and it's where we can get our strength. God knows we need that so terribly bad. And again, with the Word of God, the, the New Testament Scriptures and the Old Testament Scriptures, that tells us what God's general will is for us. And then lastly, one of the reasons uh, that Jesus selected these 12, we learned, was for them to be with Him. Uh, Jesus earnestly desired fellowship. Uh, as a matter of fact, we learn when we, when we take communion as a body, when Jesus is in that prayer garden, he pleads with his disciples. He says, remain here and watch with me. And the Greek there, it implies this, this intimate fellowship between Jesus and his desire to have that fellowship uh, with his uh, fellow believers. And, and it begs a question for us, are we taking the time to set ourselves apart to, 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 to completely separate ourselves from the hustle and bustle, the chaotic moments of our days. Uh, because it's so many people say we're busy, we're busy, we're busy. And a good acronym for busy is bound under Satan's yoke. And in that so time of solitude, are we praying earnestly to our Father, not just for things, not for, just for what we want from Him. And again, there's, there's, a, there's a time for that, to make our requests known to God, but to ask Him for, for more of Him. Uh, to continue to sanctify us and conform us more and more and more in the image of his son. And are we jumping into the word and falling in love with God's word to us? This is his mind to us. And then are we doing that with each other so we can love each other and consider how to spur one another on to love 
and good works. Listen, you can't do it alone. You will fail every time. One thing we constantly say here at Hendersonville Church is doing life alone is deadly. This is a beautiful account of just the 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 chaotic life that 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 Jesus uh, would sometimes have to face. But you'll remember Jesus was never in a hurry, and he was constantly spending time alone with his father so that he could pray and be in his word. And he did it also with the fellowship of the church. I hope you get as much out of this as I did. And I just hope you have a great day. Take care.